Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. The Aaron Donald of pass rushers, TJ what ranked second best edge defender in ESPN survey. The debate regarding who the best edge rusher between Pittsburgh's TJ Watt and Cleveland's Miles Garrett will continue to rage as long as the two remain at the height of their NFL powers. ESPN tried to put an end to that argument, at least for now, on Wednesday morning with the release of its top 10 edge survey from NFL executives, coaches and players. In that survey, Garrett landed at number one overall with what right behind him at number two, which was how things ended up in the 2023 NFL Defensive Player of the Year voting, too, though that was largely flawed. The debate regarding who the best edge rusher between Pittsburgh's TJ Watt and Cleveland's Miles Garrett will continue to rage as long as the two remain at the height of their NFL powers. ESPN tried to put an end to that argument, at least for now, on Wednesday morning with the release of its top 10 edge survey from NFL executives, coaches and players. In that survey, Garrett landed at number one overall with what right behind him at number two, which was how things ended up in the 2023 NFL Defensive Player of the Year voting, too, though that was largely flawed. Though he landed at number two, what was called the Aaron Donald of pass rushers by one voter. He even moved up two spots from last season's rankings in the summer survey coming off a dominant season that saw him lead the NFL with 19 sacks, becoming the first player ever to lead the league in sacks in three different seasons. What didn't quite match that feat, but he's back where he belongs, in the conversation at the top. An injury-riddled 2022 campaign dropped him to fourth on last year's list. His game-wrecking ways were on full display in 2023, leading the NFL with 19 sacks and finishing second in Defensive Player of the Year voting, ESPN's Jeremy Fowler writes regarding what in the top 10 survey for ESPN.com. What has earned four All-Pro first-team nods over the past five seasons, and his 96.5 sacks through his first seven years ranks third all-time behind Reggie White, 110, and Demarcus Ware, 99.5. Outside of an injury-riddled season in 2022 that caused him to miss a number of games and limited his production while recovering from a partially torn pectoral muscle, what deserves to be in the conversation for the best edge defender in football, period. CBS Sports ranked what is the NFL's best edge defender on Tuesday, which wasn't a surprise. That's where he belongs. But as long as he's in the top three discussion among Garrett and Dallas Micah Parsons, it doesn't really matter. All are incredible at what they do and have different strengths to their games. Though he's not the flashiest player and certainly doesn't look like he came out of a comic book, what truly is a superstar and one of the faces of the NFL. His 2023 season was remarkable. He broke the Steelers' all-time sacks record, recorded the second-most sacks in NFL history in his first 100 games behind only Reggie White, and at the end of the season put him closer and closer to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He can't be labeled a high-motor guy, he's just exceptionally hard to block, probably the hardest in the league, a high-ranking NFL official said in the ESPN.com survey. He has technique, power, counters, violence, bend. Everything you want. He was healthy and on the field all season and dominated each and every week. The star outside linebacker had at least at least one sack in 13 of 17 games on the year. He was a force against the run, too, added an interception and scored a defensive touchdown on a fumble return, helping the Steelers win an early season game against the Cleveland Browns. Who are the best Steelers offensive guards of all time? Vote now. In case you missed it, Behind the Steel Curtain is assembling the ultimate all-time Steelers roster as voted on by you, Steelers fans. Every weekday leading up to training camp, we'll be posting a poll for you to vote for the best players at each position. The final all-time Steelers roster will be officially unveiled on Wednesday, July 24, the day before Steelers' 2024 training camp kickoff. With a career that saw him hoist the Lombardi and rewarded a gold jacket in Canton, Fanica's place on this list should be a lock.
Fanica faced adversity as a teen when he suffered from seizures prior to being diagnosed with epilepsy, putting his football future into question. At the time of his retirement, he was one of just 12 guards to have six or more All-Pro selections. Ravens linebacker Ray Lewis once called Fanica dominant, crediting his ability to control the tempo up front. Regrettably, Fanica didn't get to spend his final playing years in Pittsburgh, but his place among Steelers' greats is cemented. DeCastro played only nine seasons before a lingering ankle injury forced him into early retirement, but during his time was recognized one of the best in the game, earning two All-Pro and six Pro Bowl selections. Like Fanica, he wore 66 in the black and gold and made his money clearing the way for the like of Le'Veon Bell and James Conner. Foster may have an uphill climb in this poll, but that's not something he isn't used to. One of my favorite unsung heroes of the 2010s for the Steelers, Foster made the Steelers roster in 2009 as an undrafted free agent out of Tennessee. He would mix in to start 12 games as an injury replacement during his first two years in the league and locked down a starting role in 2011, which he held on to for the rest of his 11-year career, all in Pittsburgh. He wasn't decorated with any All-Pro or Pro Bowl honors, but he started in a Super Bowl and was a key piece of the offensive line during the Killer B era. Steelers insider downplays supposed big offensive need. Pittsburgh Steelers insider Brian Batko of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette doesn't believe the club needs to be in a rush to acquire a proven star-wide receiver such as Brandon Ayak of the San Francisco 49ers this summer. I think it's been overblown a little bit because of the run-first philosophy that they're going to operate with under Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator, Batko said during a Tuesday appearance on Pittsburgh sports radio station 93.7 The Fan, as shared by Alex Kazora of Steelers Depot. The personnel, the way they're set up and built at this moment tells you they're going to lean into handing the ball off a lot to, running backs, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. As recently as Tuesday, Thomas Valentine of Pro Football Focus argued that the Steelers should trade for Ayak after they shipped Deontay Johnson to the Carolina Panthers this offseason. NFL analyst Marcus Mosher of the 33rd team named Pittsburgh as probably the most likely team to land Ayak, who was in the final year of his rookie contract and seemingly isn't close to signing an extension with the 49ers. With all of that said, both local and national reporters agree that Harris and Warren should see plenty of touches early and often in Smith's offense that is expected to help veteran quarterback Russell Wilson be more efficient this fall. Unless the Steelers trade for a playmaker such as Ayuk, 2022 second-round draft pick George Pickens will enter the season as the club's top receiver. When they do throw, I think there's something to be said for clearly defining and carving out the role for George Pickens as, you are our number one guy, Batko added. We're gonna throw it to you even when you're not open. And we trust you to still make the play. It shouldn't be forgotten that a 49ers team looking to make a second straight trip to the Super Bowl doesn't have to give Ayak a lucrative extension this summer, as he signed through the upcoming season and can be retained for 2025 via the franchise tag. As for the Steelers, they seem to be moving forward as if Ayak won't be part of their offense this season. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon AIYUK? Leave your opinion in the comments.